Casa Susana was mostly ruled, sort of, by Susana. And Susana was more of the school, girls want to have fun. I realized the moment I saw the first picture that this was something incredible, that this was like a view into something that uh, you know we weren't supposed to see, that this was a very private group of people, and that it was sort of another take on men and dresses that I had never seen before and I thought was really unbelievable. Casa Susana was near New York City. It was a large resort. It was supposed to be 150 acres. It was an old vacation camp. It was very private. You were very protected. You would see a car coming from a distance. I think, you know, a few times they were surprised by people, but not, you know, not much. They, they, they really were in a safe haven. <laughs> It was very unusual, yeah, and as far as we have found out, it was basically the only place like this that uh, existed on the, on the East Coast. It was not that unusual uh, to have transvestites, but it was very underground. It was very secret. They were, they were very afraid. They would just dress up in their room and not dare go out. The way the kind of word was spread about the resort was because Susanna was a columnist for a transvestite publication, and she would simply advertise it in the publication. You know, $25, including meals for the weekend, and you can be dressed and walk around this estate in the daylight as a woman. Susanna lived in New York. She was married. Her wife had a wig store on Fifth Avenue, which was very convenient. Casa Susanna was mostly ruled, sort of, by Susanna. And Susanna was more of the school, girls want to have fun. She was a bit of an exhibitionist. When she opened the resort Casa Susanna, she painted in big red letters Casa Susanna on a board and nailed it to a tree. That's, you know, you see that picture on the cover of the book. And she said, why did I do that? Because I thought that maybe this is the only time I would see my name in big red letters anywhere. So we feel like now, listen girl, you're a star now. You really are the star you always wanted to be. It was kind of a case of like all dressed up and nowhere to go. They have like a, a pretty old fashioned, a pretty pre feminist vision of women. So, doing dishes and cooking and cleaning the house and everything, they love doing that because they saw that as feminine activities. What's so incredible is that these people created a secret society to be ordinary. And I think that's the aspect of the book that I think everyone really relates to so much. I mean, you see them, they're sitting around a table um, like it, you know, could be a, a family reunion dinner or even a, a holiday dinner and all the people there are men in women's clothing. But they look very relaxed and natural but they're not really, you know, passing. I mean, to, to our eyes today, it's pretty obvious. One of our favorite pictures is the picture, we assume it's Susanna, that's taken from the back, and she's in a pink, furry bathrobe watering the lawn. 
This is, I think, what surprises people about this book is that we're so used to thinking of men in dresses as, as drag queens, as performers, as being dressed like Cher or Madonna. This was not that. These men, when they were dressed as women, wanted to be respectable ladies and, and kind of express a vulnerability that they couldn't apparently express as men. We also realized very quickly that another very important aspect for us is that the pictures were meant to remain private. I was not something that had been done to be published, to be shown other people. I was for their own use. And mostly, they had been taken by each other. There was no outsider. There was no planning for the outside world. This is a proof that it exists. We are really women, you see. Here's a picture that was a proof of their existence as women. Basically, they say the antique business is the three Ds, death, divorce, and debt. So we always just kind of assume that Susanna must have died. Maybe her things were like in a storage locker someplace and she never picked them up. What's happened to her has been one of the mysteries of this story. Apparently, at some point in the late 60s, I guess the, the resort sort of stopped existing and she kind of dropped out of sight. And no one's ever been able to confirm really what happened to her. This is Susanna's first resort, the Chevalier de Yon. Yeah, that's it, historic. We said the last thing we wanted to do, you know, to like basically uh, art people, expose them publicly when that was something that was obviously meant to remain private. But it was a long time ago. And we thought this is really uh, too interesting. The world has to see it. We have to share it with other people. And we thought if we do it respectfully, with some love and tenderness for them, which is the way we feel, we thought there is nothing wrong with it. Without this kind of document could be forgotten completely. Mm -hmm. 